Hi, I'm Steve from Two Cat Media and welcome to another video. In fact, welcome to the channel in general. Welcome, my friends. In today's video, I'm gonna show you via screen recording uh, an app that I use to determine whether or not I should fly my drone and if it's safe to do so or not. Now, I get asked this question here and there throughout, well, since I've been started the channel, actually, and rather than maybe keep on replying to the same one, I thought, if, you know what, if I make a video of it, maybe it might help somebody out. And I get asked, you know, how do you know what kind of wind speed it's going to be at a certain altitude? Because obviously it's different from the ground upwards. If it's going to rain, that could be quite simple, and also sunsets and that. And is there some way you can find all the information in one place? And after a little bit of a research and that, I found that there's an app that I personally got along with after checking out a few apps, and it's called UAV Forecast. Now, this video is not sponsored or any kind of paid promotion by UAV Forecast, but I thought I'd share with you guys an app that I use, uh, so at least then you can better prepare yourself for your flight ahead. So without further ado, let's get into it, and I'll show you quickly around the app. Okay, so this is what you get when you go into the app. This is in landscape mode to make it easier for YouTube, but I normally use it in portrait mode. It's a bit easier for me. Now at the top here, we have a search bar, and obviously I don't live in Trafalgar Square, but in London, but I live more closer to Birmingham, but I don't want you groupies knowing exactly where I live. Now you can type in any address there or location, and you can search then the forecast for that particular location up to so far ahead. You can even save that location by pressing the star button here, but for that service, you do need to pay a subscription of 21 pounds and 99 pence or whatever the equivalent is for your country. Uh, now, next to that, you have the triangle button here, which is my location. You press that and it will take you to your location, wherever you happen to be. Now, next to this, you here you have a share button. If I click onto that, you can share the app or a screenshot and the app to places such as WhatsApp, email, and various other different apps, and even like Facebook, I believe, as well. Okay, so we look at these 12 boxes here. The first one is for the weather, self-explanatory, sunny, windy, rainy, cloudy, etc. Obviously, you don't want the snow or the really windy one or the rain ones. Here we have, it says Sunday here, but it's actually Monday, unless I'm back a day, I don't think I am. You've got your sunrise and your sunset times, and you can change your 24 hour clock there if you so wish. Next to that, we have the temperature. You've got the air temperature, and optionally, you can adjust it for your wind chill, as it says there, because obviously it's cold out when it's windy at times. Now, you can set your minimum temperature. I'm going to set, you can go all, oh, I've just gone off that. You can set yours all the way to minus 30, all the way up to 50 degrees. And I'm going to set mine at zero because normally you can operate at around zero degrees centigrade pretty okay and we can set a maximum temperature up at 30 degrees uh, i can always adjust that should i wish to and i can adjust for wind chill which i think i'm going to do that as well you can also adjust your centigrade and your fahrenheit there uh, next to that, we have basically the chance of rain, the precipitation probability. At the moment, 0% in Trafalgar Square, which is really, really good. And you can set your maximum precip precipitation probability there as well. Or you can turn that off. Here we have the cloud cover, depending on your light and your visibility to a point. If you have your maximum sky cover, you can turn that on. The minimum cloud base height and the show cloud base to turn those on you do have to pay a subscription for those bottom two next here we have your visibility now 16 kilometers is really really good you can select your minimum i normally put at least five kilometers or i'll be able to see as a minimum and you can change that in units sort of miles or kilometers next here we have the wind now the wind here it says it's blowing at 20 miles an hour at 800 meters so here you can set your maximum wind if you want. I've put 25 miles an hour and I'll adjust and make my decision on the day should I need to. And it can include gusts of wind in that as well. So let's just put that back to 25. And then we can have our wind altitude here. So I want it at 25 miles an hour at around 125 meters. Now the wind direction here now actually, when you're on the phone or your device and you turn it, that does actually turn. Because obviously, if you're flying at a bit of a distance, 
then you want to be flying against the wind going out if possible and flying with the wind coming back just for, for the battery's sake really so you can get back hopefully uh, so you can choose on there if you want to use the compass or not or magnetic north here we have visibility satellites so how many satellites are actually visible at the moment i've put a minimum of 12 and then you've got your different satellites there. I suggest that you select them, which is your GLONASS and your Galileo. Uh, the KP is like a geomagnetic storm. Uh, yeah, it says there. So above three means disruption to GPS. It's actually free at the moment in Trafalgar Square. So we're okay. I set my maximum to three. Uh, next to that is the satellites that are locked in. Now the satellites that are locked in are 12.8. I'm gonna adjust that. I want my minimum satellites to be at least 10, a minimum locked in of 12. Okay, so it's got a chance to not connect and lock on to a couple of satellites. So at least I always get at least 10. Again, I will make my decision based on the day and how I feel there and then. Now on the bottom here, you've also got, because I've got it turned on in the settings, uh, DJI no fly zones. So we can click onto that, it brings up a map. If you scroll out or pinch your screen, here we go. And you can see there, if I was in Trafalgar Square, that is exactly, I would be in a, a, a quite a bit of a no fly zone, I think, yeah? On this map here, we'll come back to that map in a bit, actually. Okay, so let's go back to the conditions. Now the bar across the bottom here is your time. So if you adjust the time, can go back in time or forward in time of this day, you can see where it is exactly like. So it was good to fly at around six o'clock this morning and then good to fly, according to my settings anyway, at a, sometime after five o'clock. If you do move it and you want it back to the exact same time as it is right now, you press this little timer here button and it takes you back to your current time. Now the free version gets you 24 hours of forecast. Any further than that, you will have to pay. So I can check on Tuesday all the way up to around eight o'clock and I can see that tomorrow, if I wanted to fly my drone, sometime after six o'clock, I'll be okay roughly to about seven, maybe half past seven, maybe even eight o'clock actually. And then a bit later around half past four. Any further than that, like on Wednesday, then I'd have to pay for the subscription. So let's look on the blue bar on the right hand side. Okay, so here on forecast here, you will see this is the current time on the bar at the top. This shows you everything that's everything that's in green is all within the parameters that I've pre-selected. Here we can see Monday, it's nine o'clock, but just this just forgets night time. But yeah, nine o'clock there to eleven o'clock at night. So those three hours that are left of the day, you can see that if it wasn't dark, that it would be okay to fly based on temperature and wind speed, etc. And now for Tuesday tomorrow, we can see at a glance here, which hours quite clearly the ones in brown is where we might be outside our parameters and we have to make an informed decision based on that. Okay, so we can see here on the wind profile, this is the current time, which is at 20 past eight. And we can see here, this is the different altitudes, 10 meters altitude all the way up to, but we're not gonna go above 120. So we'll go up to about 100. We can see if it wasn't nighttime, that wind wise with, with winds and gusts, it will be within our parameters and the temperature as well. But we can just see, uh, I don't know who's gonna be flying at 1500 meters. <laughs> okay, so, and then at the bottom here, you've got your bar and you can like uh, go to Tuesday for tomorrow and we can kind of move that bar and kind of see what's the best time if you want to fly at a particular altitude as well. Then we have our map. So this is the same map really as before for the no fly DJI zones. Okay, we've got our road map here. We've got our satellite map. We have our hybrid map and we have our terrain map as well. Okay, so here we have our settings. Now the threshold settings at the very, very top, these are all your parameters, your minimum and your maximums all in one place, okay? So if you just wanna go and set everything up, go to your settings and go to your threshold settings here, and they can check out your wind, maximum wind speed, your wind altitude. We want to get to about one, two, five there. All the things we've just discussed, you can change all those in one go if you so wish. Next, you can check out your no-fly zones. You can put in your drone type. You can click if you want to show DJI no-fly zones. If you've got a DJI, that is, if you haven't, turn it off. You can tick there to show warning zones or to show enhanced warning zones. I just leave those on just as a matter of fact. Uh, you've got your USA no-fly zones there. 
and airport circles, etc. So that's all there. Next, we have our notification settings. Now, this is for the USA only for weather alert notifications, and you can select for minor, moderate, or severe. But that's not for the U UK, which you'll find, you know, it is what it is. Okay, let's go back to the settings. And now we can change our unit settings for the wind in miles per hour, meters per second or kilometers. I have mine in miles per hour. The altitude, I have mine in meters. Uh, my temperature in centigrade and my visibility in kilometers. Okay, then you can choose your different languages, quite self-explanatory. And also then you can have your different theme, like your light theme, if I click on that, your dark, have an auto or system. I have mine on dark, a bit easier for my eyes. And you can also change your color blind palette if you so wish you can select if you want auto or uav forecast or dark sky you can also show your daylight hours only so if you you know you don't want to see all the nighttime stuff you can just click on that and it will take away all the stuff that's at night so you less information basically to look through things like 24 hour clock there all the usual things you can register log in reset your password etc all that stuff and also sign up for your premium membership should you wish and then lastly on help here we can select on that and this shows you basically their website which is uavforecast.com and their support email and the other apps that they do such as if it's good to cycle good to kite good to run good to stargaze or is it nice out okay so that's all we've got time for i hope you found this video helpful and somewhat informative if you have then please give it a big thumbs up it helps the channel greatly and any questions or comments that you want to put about the channel or as regards this video specifically then put them in the comment section below and if you are new to the channel then please press subscribe and you too my friend can be part of the exclusive yet elusive community that is two cat media so until the next video Stay safe and drone on.